hello everyone i welcome you to our session llm 0 to 1 now we are into part 1 which is vectors and embeddings and in part 1 we are today into session 2 my name is shubhradeep and i am going to be there with you throughout the session let us talk about ai 430 the purpose so they are here to provide authentic affordable and world class ai education and that is for your benefit uh, about me, my name is Shubhradeep and I have spent a decade building AI solutions for enterprises, mid-sized businesses, startups, and even for Indian government. My recent research work in applied LLM have won two prestigious awards. I'm also a global speaker in AI and machine learning and I have delivered over 200 plus lectures. With this, let's dive into today's session. Okay, so what we are going to learn today, we have already covered uh, conceptualization and motivation. So these are already done. So this is where we are uh, going to dive today. So we are going to dive into classic embedding techniques. In this particular session, you're going to see TF IDF and you're going to see BM25. So TF IDF is what we're going to cover. You have word to vec you have glove, and you have fast text. So essentially, we are going to cover TF-IDF and its alternative BM25. We are then going to cover word to vec We are also going to cover GLOVE, which is global vectors. And then finally, we are going to talk about fast text. Okay, so I hope you are all excited. Let's talk about TF-IDF. TF-IDF is comprised of two terms, tf and IDF. TF stands for term frequency. Okay. And IDF stands for inverse document frequency. Now, what are this? Let's try to understand better. So, TF is uh, denoted by this function TF in bracket Q and D. So, TF stands for term frequency, Q stands for the query term, and D stands for the document. So, number of times the term Q appears in a document divided by the total number of terms in the document. So this is what term frequency means. So it essentially means that number of times a particular word appears in a document. So IDF, as you can see over here, stands for inverse document frequency. The Q over here stands for the search term. So this is essentially the, the proportion of the appearance of the term Q, okay? In the corpus, usually transformed using a log function. So, so there are two parts to it. I say one part is that it is the proportion of the term Q or your search term, which is appearing in the corpus. And essentially, uh, 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 this is transformed using a log function to ensure that there are no infinite, infinitely small or large values. Here is an example, and we are going to see a detailed example as we go to code. Okay, so uh, I have 12 documents. My search term Q has a term frequency 0 0.25 in document 1, and my search term Q appears four times in 12 documents. Then how do I find the TF IDF of this? So essentially 0 0.25, which is my TF multiplied by log of the number of documents divided by number of times the, uh, 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 the, the, the query term appears in the documents. This is uh, how you get it, okay? Next, we'll go into the lab and see how programmatically we can derive TF-IDF. We are into the lab of TF-IDF. TF and IDF is comprised of two terms. TF stands for term frequency and IDF stands for inverse document frequency. Now, what is term frequency? Term frequency is a measure of the frequency of, docu of, of word in a document. So that's what we have given over here. And what is inverse document frequency? So inverse document frequency is a way of measuring how rare they are across all documents. If the words appear in many documents, 
then they have low IDF as they hardly add any distinguishing factor uh, to the document. But let's say the word appears only few times, right? Then they are ensured that a particular document can be distinguished from the other. So a word that appear in many documents have low IDF and words that appear in few documents, okay? have a high ID. All right. Now, if you see over here, the first thing that I have done is that I have imported a few libraries. I've imported libraries over here. I've used NLTK. NLTK is primarily used uh, for tokenization and stop words. Um, and many of the uh, natural language uh, operations can be done with NLTK. Okay, this is my corpus. So I have, I have document one, document two and document three over here okay my first document says that earth is oval second document says that earth is green and third document says that green is good okay so what i'm doing next right i have a code which tells me that there are documents how many documents are there so we essentially have three documents and what are the what are the unique words or tokenized unique words that I have? So I have basically these five words: green, good, is, earth, and oval. Okay. So now with this, uh, I have another function which is called word index. So essentially, this word index ensures enumerates over the word sets and give every word a particular index. Next thing that I have is that count dictionary. So what I what I am doing so special in this count dictionary? Okay, so in the count dictionary, uh, I am essentially counting the the five words that actually has information value to me. You have green, which appears two times. You have good, which appears once. Is the present in every document, so three. Earth, again in two. Oval, again in one. So we have oval and good, which are rare. And we have earth and uh, green, which are available to in two of the documents, and is is uh, available in all the three documents. Okay. So, uh, next, uh, so we define the function for term frequency over here. Now, term frequency, as we understand, is number of times the word appears compared to the total number of words. And we have the IDF, which essentially we have a log on the total number of documents and the word occurrences. Finally, we do the TFID calculation. So TFID calculation is here. So if you can see over here, I take the, the word, which is information value for me. So they, there I am basically calculating the TFID for them. Next, I'm going to further show my results. And if you see over here, Earth is oval, okay? If you remember, Earth was uh, appearing twice. So what happens over here is that Earth is given a value zero. You have green also appearing twice. So green also has a value zero. Now, interestingly, if, if you see the value of ease is negative. So ease has been given a very low TF idea value. The reason is appeared in all the three documents. Since it appeared in all the three documents, essentially the value addition of is in distinguishing these three uh, probably sentences in the corpus was the lowest. Now, if we see the next set of uh, items in consideration, so we have oval, which appeared once, and we have good, which appeared once. So as naturally in a small corpus, where the total number of uh, 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 documents are three, in that the unique uh, 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 word items are five, and in that you have oval and good appearing only once in either of the documents, so they have an equal TFIDF. So if I if I talk of a art this oval, right? So art is zero, okay? Next, we don't have values for these two, so they are they are virtually not present. We have is an oval, so is is minus 0 0.095, and oval primarily is 0 0.135 because it appears once. So essentially, 
your uh, if if you take this particular sentence into consideration its vector representation would be something like this now this is what tf idf provides okay so now we talk about the challenges of tf idf and what is the alternative so here is one big challenge with tf idf okay now let's say uh, we try to change the tf slightly and try to see what is the impact on tf idf so if i do a partial differentiation of tf idf with respect to tf my outcome would be idf okay so essentially what is the challenge over here if my tf increases first right uh, it, it still depends on the idf so 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 there is no change on the idf so if i if if my tf increases from 1 to 2 ideally that's a good jump right so there is a good margin marginal uh, increase in tf because it has not doubled so there should be some impact on the idf but there is no impact because of the way the formula is designed so this is a challenge and the solution here is what we have today is primarily bm25 now what bm25 has done is that it has kept the tf for same and where it has done changes is in the idf so in idf is it it has actually added a factor of tf now essentially if there is a change in uh, tf the idf is also changed now what is the impact so if i do a partial differentiation of bm25 with respect to uh, term frequency i see that there is a change in tf okay now here is an example so it's, what we have done over here is that we have bm25 over here and we have tf over here now let's say i change my tf slightly i could see that my complete bm25 increases but then hey i mean it should not become infinity right which means that when I incrementally increase my TF, it should ensure that there is a increase in the BM25 outcome, but it should not be uh, a scenario where somebody is uh, doing a key stuffing and keep and keeps on increasing the 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 the, the ranking of the document. So to curtail that, once you keep on increasing the TF or the marginal benefit decrease five even when the tf increases so with this it ensures that uh, even though there is an increase in tf bm25 increases but then if you keep on playing games with the system in, by doing the keyword stuff you are going to see a decline in the margin marginal benefit so this is how bm25 overcomes the challenges of tf idf and has become one of the popular uh, ways of text extraction or text search. Okay. So we'll try to learn more about BM25, right? So what I've done over here is that there is a new BM25S library which has come out. So BM25S is a library primarily that implements BM25 in Python. So this allows you to rank documents based on a query. Now, BM25, as we all know, uh, or maybe for few people, it is a very new thing. So it is it is used uh, as it's, it's a widely used ranking function and it is used for text retrieval tasks. It is a core component of search services like Elasticsearch. OK, well, you will see that I have installed BM25 over here. Next, uh, so stemming is an approach or a methodology in natural language processing which brings a term to its basic form for example if there's a term called crying it will come to cry playing it will come to play right so essentially it brings down the term to its basic format so what i'm going to do is that to make my uh, search simpler and easier i'm going to use a stemmer so this is a stemmer okay so uh, now going down here is the complete implementation of BM25. Okay, so let me go step by step. Okay, so import BM25. Okay, so here import BM25, import stemma. So again, it's optional. I have now put a corpus in place. You can see over here that I have put a corpus in place. Okay, 
Now, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to say that again, the, the language that I'm going to use is English. So you please use the English stemma. Now, here it is, the corpus tokenization, right? So I'm asking BM25S uh, uh, to primarily tokenize the corpus that I've given. I'm saying that my stoppers are in all, in, all in English and please use the stemma, by stemma, okay? The next thing which is happening here is that uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to uh, create the BM25 model, index the corpus, and then I have given a query over here. So I've taken uh, this particular corpus into consideration. And what I did here is that I have juggled the, the, a few words and asked a query, right? So what will happen over here is that I have created this uh, retriever, right? And I have created this function BM25S. And essentially what I'm trying to say here is that this is my query token, tokenize the BM25S, uh, the query token. And now using the retriever, please run through and give me the top three outcomes, okay? So again, uh, let me try to show you how the outcome looks like. So here it is, okay? So what essentially I have asked over here is that, does the main point of an essay support the thesis? So what happens here is, here is that there is, a, there is a main point, there is a essay, there is a, there is a support the thesis. So what happens here is that it goes and tries to uh, search through, I mean, it, it is ultra fast because as soon as I ran it, it actually ran and gave me the outcome, outcome right? So it says that, okay, there are these three sentences where I can see a very similar combination of uh, the query that you've asked. I have ranked it accordingly. So according to me, these are the three, uh, top three, uh, 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 probably top three uh, documents which you should search for. Okay, so this is a very simple implementation of BM25S. We understand now that uh, BM25S uh, is a widely popular uh, 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 ranking function and it is used for text retrievals. It has some uh, inherent benefits uh, of uh, from TF-IDF considering the way that they have functioned the IDF, which is which has uh, basically TF into it. Okay. Now let's get back. Right? Okay. In BM25, what has changed is the IDF function. And in the IDF function, what we have essentially done here is that we have basically introduced TF. But then you would have seen that there are two more values. One is K and one is B. So what is the importance of this two? Constant of K and B. One, to reduce down on the impact of additional occurrences of words. And two, to penalize uh, the longer queries and boost the shorter queries. Okay. Now, what would be the typical value? So 1.2 for K and for B, it is generally 0 0.75, okay? So this is what most of the data scientists or uh, programmers try to use. But again, it would depend upon your use case. I just wanted to add this small bit of information before we uh, stop our discussion on TF-IDF and BM25. TF-IDF to identify that uh, an approach or to basically build on an approach that helped us to create and a, a vector space, okay? The next thing that we have, we have done here is that we realized TF-IDF has got some challenges. Now we understand that there are alternatives already available which can overcome those challenges and, and deliver better results. So BM25 is the other alternative that you've seen in place of TF-IDF, which actually uses the same set of parameters with a little bit of tweaks and it has added K and B, which are actually tunable constants uh, given to the programmer or the data scientist to better uh, modulate their search algorithms based on the business use case they are attempting to solve. Okay, thank you.